Welcome everyone to Life Beyond Six Feet. I'm Damian with RKB Paranormal. And this week I'm very excited to have the owner of the haunted Ox Anna Victorian in Oxford, Alabama, Renee Banderos, and a former tenant and journalist of the the home, Kelly Tipton. Ladies, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having us. Yes. Welcome to the Oxana Victorian. Yes. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um now I've seen Renee, I've seen your post on one of the, the Facebook paranormal groups talking about this this house and it really intrigued me. And so you know, I reached out and you know we've been chatting for a couple of weeks and I thought it would be really cool to get you guys on to kind of talk about the home, the history of the home and some stuff that you guys have experienced and, and, and other people have experienced there. So just give me let's talk a little bit about the history of the of the home. Okay, it's the first house built in Oxford by the Cooper family, and they're one of the founders of the town. Um, they came from South Carolina. They were wealthy landowners. And first of all, they moved what used to be Annie's Town, which is Anniston. And they owned several hundred acres there. And then there was a falling out between the Coopers and the Noble family, which is also another prominent family. They have Noble Street and have mm -hmm. Coopers Crossing. And they wanted to annex their land into the town. And they had a big falling out about that. So the Coopers ended up moving, was it Oxana back then or Lick Skillet still? Um, I don't know. I know this home predates the name Oxford. Right. That's why we named it yeah. Oxana because mm -hmm. it first was named Lick Skillet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Skillet. It had some traveling, yeah, mm -hmm. traveling workers, miners, I don't know. And the guy licked the skillet clean. So they just <laughs> named it Lick Skillet. Oh, all right. <laughs> so. And they named it Oxana, and then it later became Oxford. So, yeah. So this was the first house built, and so I thought Oxana fits it properly since it was built in that time period. So right now, now who and did anyway, you guys? The, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that the Cooper family was very prominent, and um, they built the first mm -hmm. national bank. Um, this this home was built in eighteen eighty exactly. Oh, wow. And it's still very original. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, so the detailing, the gingerbread, the um, hand carved medallions in the trim. I mean, every it's really a work of art. Oh wow! Um, all of yeah, all of the um, the transoms over the window, uh, over the doors, um, the, the, just the molding in it. Um, the baseboards are what nine, nine inch. inches, nine inch baseboards. You wow. never see that anymore. Oh no. The railing, the finials on the staircases on the staircase, everything's hand carved and it's it's gorgeous. Eight fireplaces in it. Yeah. In oh, every wow. room. That's mm -hmm. that's you definitely yeah. see that. Mm -hmm. Now now who is believed yeah. to actually haunt the home? Mary Cooper. That's I was gonna show you the picture. Oh, Mary Cooper. Yeah, have, I put it on here. Oh, I can't open mine. <laughs> oh, I know, but I turned my phone off because it keeps ringing. Oh, okay. But yeah, she's our very prominent. We call her the mistress of the house. It's her house, basically. Right. Yeah. So, Charles Cooper is the patriarch. Yes, Mary and, was his daughter. Okay. And he had, he had probably I think twelve or thirteen children, but not. Uh, I think four of them didn't live past 10. Oh, wow. 10, they died probably infections you or whatever. That? Um, That's one of the family photos. Can, you, you, can, can you see, see it? Can you see that? Do I need to hold it closer? I could, oh, but it but okay. it just zoomed in on on Renee. Anybody that's going to be watching this, it, it's been randomly zooming uh -huh. in on Renee. I think that's I think that's Mary just kind of messing with us. So it is, <laughs> it is. I'm telling you, she's very protective of me. She, right. she loves Renee. Yeah. Like I don't. Maybe your kindred spirits or something. I don't know. I think That's so crazy. Too. Um, now, actually, I have a bigger <laughs> photo. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. And there it goes. It zoomed in on you again. This is, <laughs> and now it's just. I don't know what's happening. Um, now here's the girls. <laughs> same thing. As soon as you put it up, it starts zooming in on. Now it's. This is, <laughs> This is crazy. Anyway, um, now did did now did Mary pass away in the house, or, or, or is there any known deaths that's occurred in the house? 
We know Charles passed away in the house, the father, the one that built the house. Okay. We know for sure he did. Um, as far as the rest of the family, I'm not completely sure. Okay. Yes, we during our many paranormal investigations, we've tried to, you know, ask questions about, uh, you know, maybe what happened. Um, we did ask a question about how many spirits were in the house, how many Coopers were in here. And there are a lot, yeah. but they all lived here too. Right. Yeah. There were, there were a lot of children. Um, and one of the questions was, are you free to leave? And they said, no. So huh. we think, yes, we think that maybe Mr. Cooper was very domineering probably. Right. And we know where husband robert reed was very very dominating over her yes robert is one of the spirits that acts out regularly he's angry yes he doesn't oh, wow. like men they're huh. angry and they get red-faced and they've even said that they felt like they could kill somebody yes oh, one wow. of the one of the investigations we had here was actually a ghost of christmas past and um we had a crowd and it, it was a nice evening and um a man behind me, actually, uh, he said, he raised his hand. He said, I need to go outside for some fresh air. And the, Leslie said, are you okay? And he said, no. He said, I'm hot. He said, I'm, I'm, I feel mad. He said, and I feel like I could kill somebody. And wow. we let him we let him go outside some, for some fresh air. <laughs> yeah, soon the men's face actually got bright red. Yeah. And they were sweating. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that, that's pretty wild when when you just randomly kind of get pissed off like that for just kind of out of nowhere um mm -hmm. that's and it's always a good thing to get them out of the house as quickly as possible too so <laughs> right um so besides the original owners and yourself how many different owners has there been of the house that you're aware um, of i counted about the history went back about eight families that i that, that showed mm -hmm. on the history of the you know when you pull up owners Right. But it's it, it, it this house stayed in the Cooper family. Oh yeah, for a long time until what the nineteen fifties about. And then oh, the, wow. Phillips, mm -hmm. the Phillips, they were another prominent family. They moved in here too. Yes. So this house, at, you know, was passed from, you know, within the Cooper family. So they, I I remember doing the research on it, and I think it was up until the about the nineteen fifties. Oh wow. That it, that it left the family. Well, up the street and the house very next door to me was Annie Cooper's house. So that was her mm -hmm. house. And okay. then up the road, three houses where Mary and Robert moved into that house. <laughs> and then the one up the very top of the street, it's a bigger one. And he was a very prominent figure. Um, mm -hmm. A politician of the Davis Cooper? Davis C. Cooper. Yes. Yeah, he was a mayor for 19 years. Here in this town. Um, oh, wow. Member of the president of the Baptist Association um, and a Mason and just some other mm -hmm. stuff very prominent in the community. Right. He's all listed in the city uh, building down there. Right. And the women in this family married very well. And um, a lot of their husbands were in politics. Yeah. So a lot of senators and yeah, a senator and another mayor also lived in this house. Right. Oh, wow. So so yeah. the state of Alabama is politically, you know, influenced by the Coopers as well. So right. yeah, mm -hmm. they, they had a cotton mill. They had a, well, it's a textile mill. Mm -hmm. They had a mercantile, a bank, they, and, and they started a bank and a. And they helped the railroad come store. through. Yeah, grocery store. They were instrumental in getting the railroad. Oh, and the ore, uh, iron ore factory that's gone now next door, except for it's also. Meant over there that was theirs too so, yeah, so just, wow. just a lot of money just old money yeah wow so. now now renee when <laughs> renee when did you actually purchase the home i've owned it for almost seven years um i got it december 2015 and moved in in january 2016 all right so, so when, you, when you purchased the home did you automatically just start experiencing stuff like from day one or did it take some time or how did that kind of it took up? two months two months um I was in my bedroom up here, the master bedroom upstairs, and I had a little toy poodle. And I, that was a long story. My husband never ended up moving down. So, <laughs> but we were in there and it was two in the morning 
and I heard these deep scratches on the door on the outside. Huh. And up by, at least by the door handle, which is almost three feet. Right. And it was like, it had to have been a large animal, deep scratches. And that went on for about three to five minutes. I mean, it was, and my dog was sitting there with his head going, what's <laughs> going on? Wow. And no way in heck I was going to open that door. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened two nights in a row, and then I never heard it again. And huh. the next morning, there were there were no scratches yeah, on, the on the outside of the door. There was no marks on the outside of the door. Yeah. So it was phantom scratching. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty wild. We've my wife and I have experienced that at a, at a place in in Mississippi before. So that's that's pretty wild. So mm -hmm. what's some of the other stuff that you've experienced that you were just like, you know what, my house is haunted. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of took off from there, really. Like a full bodied apparition. Okay. <laughs> I did see Mary. That's how I knew she wanted the house because I, I'm going to go ahead and tell it then. Um, I was coming up the stairs and I got there's two landings. I got to the second part and she was over by the, what do you call that? A, the banister? Whatever. Yeah, the banister. The banister. And it was a woman dressed in an antique white skirt and tight neck, neck uh, blouse. Oh, wow. And in the loose bun. And she just turned and looked at me and then she disappeared. Huh. That's, yep. The next couple of days, I looked at the photo, and it was Mary Cooper. That's 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 pretty awesome, in my opinion, to see a full blown apparition like that. That that would excite me a great <laughs> deal. Um, now, now, Kelly, you've lived in the house for a while too. What kind of stuff did you experience while you lived there? The first day that I moved in, um, I got locked out of the home. I was here alone and i had all of my things in the room downstairs it was january it was cold it had been raining and it was wet and um, i went outside on the front porch to have a cigarette and all my purse my phone everything was inside my room and the deadbolt locked behind me and it's not a slide it's the kind that you have to turn yeah physically turn but, i got you yes and so it i was locked out and i had no way to call anybody or you know i had to wait for someone else to come home oh wow and i was out there about an hour so right. i was i was physically locked out of this home the first day i moved in it and um it there was no one here i was by myself oh. and the, and the knob was turned from the inside oh wow yeah. Those doors, mm -hmm. it's the 1880 original stained glass door, and mm -hmm. there is no key. You can't use it for a regular door. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that you turn and you have to push to make mm -hmm. it lock. And it's a right. loud turn. Mm -hmm. So there's no way somebody could have, you know, done it. Right. <laughs> and the, and and I'm not the only one who has been locked out. Everybody, pretty yeah. much. Oh, oh really? Tell, yeah, a, a lot of people get. Get locked out of that door. I tell everybody it's, to keep their keys with them at all mm -hmm. times. It's the it's the front door. It's the front entrance. Huh. And uh, yeah, and it's uh, original door, original stained glass, original lock, mm -hmm. and that lock will turn just on you and lock you out. Yeah, it's crazy. I took a tenant out there to talk to him, and we literally heard it turning and push, and we had to call somebody. There was mm -hmm. there was nobody there. Right. Oh. And it was that quick once it, once we went out. That's, that's crazy. So, <laughs> so it sounds like pretty much all of your tenants have experienced that same thing. Have they all kind of experienced the same other activity as well? Has it all been different for everybody? It kind of varies. Um, they've heard the knocking on the walls. Yeah. I hadn't heard that. And then after they told me about it, two weeks later, I was standing by the downstairs. I heard knock, knock, knock. <laughs> I was like, wow. oh, yeah. that's what they're hearing. <laughs> right. But uh, one of my traveling nurses, she stayed in the, the yellow room downstairs. And have you ever had that sleep paralysis where you can see the room, but you can't move? A time or two. And my wife's experienced it a few times, too. So. Oh, I hate that. But yeah. she said, woke up to that. And she saw people of the time period, a few of them coming through the walls into her room. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she, I showed her the pictures and she said it was the Coopers. Mm -hmm. so that's 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 pretty wild this this house is getting <laughs> getting me more and more intrigued and, and, and yeah you're, and you're the first person i've had on the show that's actually that's been the owner of, of, of a haunted location so and that was oh. another that was another reason i wanted to get you on to 
to talk to somebody that actually lives there and not just kind of stops in during the day and stuff like that. So you're, you actually mm -hmm. do still live there, correct? Um, right now I'm staying out with my mother. Uh, my father passed from COVID last year. So oh. I've been out there with her and I'm dealing with some health issues myself. So we kind of help each other right now. I got so, you. I got you. So. And so before either one of you lived here, did you kind of like have any personal experiences in the paranormal before this house or just kind of all start at this house? No, I've had things happen to me since I was nine years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so you're you're real open and in tune with it. So that's probably why they, they make themselves so known to you. Yeah, it's a gift, I guess. I haven't seen a lot of positive things. So oh. yeah, I see demons mostly. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 so oh. that, 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 was gift. <laughs> that was that was the perfect place for that <laughs> um, no. I, I met I met Renee um when I wrote an article on this house in 2000 was it 20 2020 2020 okay 2020 it was October and I was looking for a feature story front page you know seasonal and I don't know how I heard about her, but the Netflix company had just filmed um, a movie here, the, the Devil All the Time, mm -hmm. with Robert Pattinson. And um, I came, I called her, I met with her for an interview, and um, we sat and talked, and she just told me, you know, the things that she had experienced here, and also that it was the site for several a, a Birmingham company came and then the uh out of was it how the the foreign people oh fish and net productions mm -hmm. yeah anyway mm -hmm. television shows have been filmed here and um I was gonna do those uh, but that was very newsworthy for it you know local news and um she invited me when I left to come back to an event that she was having uh, the southern ghost scroll tours were going to be here and I just came as an observer. Nothing paranormal had ever happened to me in my life. It's oh, my wow. paper. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I came back and um, I saw some things that night and just, you know, took some pictures, um, some video. And um, Renee and I struck up a friendship, though. Yeah. And then and, she moved in. Yeah. Yeah. I moved in shortly after, um, out of necessity. Um, and I stayed here for a couple of months, and um, I saw a lot of things here. Um, during the investigations, I saw things, I heard things, um, but when I was here alone, I would hear children mm. singing or laughing, and I would hear footsteps, mm -hmm. and I would think Renee would, was home, and she wouldn't be home. I would hear footsteps go up the stairs, kind of muffle around in her room a little bit and then come back down. And I would be in my room with the door closed and um, I would text her, I would say, are you home or did you come home? And she would say, no, you know, I'm at work or I'm in town. And um, so that happens a lot. Yeah, that was my next big experience. I had the, I was in the house by myself. My kids had already moved back to Tennessee. My parents moved out to a house in Munford. And my son from Tennessee and his girlfriend came down and stayed with me the night. And they said, we're going out to eat, you know, go do some stuff. So I was here alone and I heard somebody run up the stairs, like boom, 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 boom to the top of the stairs. And then it just went like quiet, like, you know, how they're listening for something. And that was a brief second. And I heard bam, 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 all the way down the stairs. The front door slam and go out. So I'm thinking, did the kids come home? What's going on? So I come out and I check, go downstairs. The door is locked downstairs, front door. So I called my son. I said, did you guys forget something? And they said, no, mom, we're clear across town. Huh. So I don't know. And, you know, it's happened a couple other times. And I've had my tenants even tell me they've heard things from women too like that. So. Well, so it, it kind of sounds like you just have a mixture, a little bit of everything. Like somebody... You have a spirit there that doesn't really bother anybody. Then you have children running around. Then you got whoever this seems to be a male spirit that likes to that kind of fuck with, with guys uh, a little bit. So. Well, like dominating over the women, too. Um, oh, no. 
Yeah. yeah, when the the last group was here, the top haunted, you know, they did an investigation after. And I was in there trying to do some EVP with him. And he literally, he's never done this to me, Robert. He, the energy was so strong. He came through, the, we were in the purple room because that's the most haunted room. Mm -hmm. His energy was literally pushing me back. I was taking steps back. That's how strong the energy was. Right. And I could feel it draining and draining my energy. And I, I sat down on the bed finally and I said, please stop. You know, I'm very ill and I'm already losing energy. Please stop. I can't take this. And then Chris from Top Con, he says, we're not here to hurt you. We're here to help with the house, you know, get funding and, and help you out. And so I moved over to the couch and, and the energy just lifted right off. And I felt so much better. And during that time, Chris said he saw orbs and like light energy. Oh, wow. And the energy went out the room. It was gone. And it felt mm -hmm. so much better. That's... And then my tenants downstairs, they told me, because it gets very active when we have investigations or yeah. bring anything. Mm -hmm. Sarah said that she felt somebody literally punch her. Oh, no. And it was an energy, but it punched her. And then her husband said, yeah, I've experienced that a couple of times myself. Mm -hmm. So he's getting a little more, uh, you know, aggressive. Yeah. He's being a little physical with some people too. Yeah, yeah. Now, have, have, now have things been thrown or or, or knocked over anything oh, like that? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Can I tell that story? Yes. Um. I will. We well, two times that I know of. The first time was the investigation. The first investigation I came to. Now this is with Leslie Hyde with the Southern Ghost Girls. Okay. Yeah. She's come here a lot. She's done the first investigations here. And Robert and Charles do not like her. No. They, they lock her out. They tell her to get the you-know-what out. Oh, man. They got the F-bomb, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, um, the first thing that crashed to the floor was a big mirror. Mm -hmm. oh. that, yes, yeah. it came off of the, that was a bureau or something, a big bureau mirror. Mirror, but everybody ran up, up it was here. That loud. We were all downstairs. And this yes. house is pretty for old, it's really soundproof. Uh huh. And it was so loud. We were like, what was that? And so everybody came running upstairs, and I stayed downstairs because there were um, like cameras and, and EVP mm -hmm. and stuff like you that. Know, the lights that change colors. Yes, and right. I had never seen anything like that. So I'm just kind of walking around checking it out. And, you know, thinking there may be some trickery, you know, and um, there was a light in the corner. It was just a green light. And in my mind, I didn't say anything out loud. I said, okay, Robert, because we had been talking to Robert already in, in that room. I said, if you're here, I said, show up and show out. And that light turned bright red. Mm. It lit up the whole dining room and it just kind of pulsed like that and right the, everybody was up here looking at the mirror on the floor oh, and man. the second time we had the um the flapper thing with the roaring the, 20s, the roaring 20s. Murder mystery dinner. yes mm -hmm. we had them and we were doing uh we were walking through the house doing an investigation and in the bathroom she had a large picture over her over her sink her vanity and it crashed it came off of the, it flew it off. flew oh, off. Wow. there's the, no way it could have done that by it itself. didn't just yeah, it, it didn't just fall it didn't just slide it flew across the room and, and, wow. and the the hook the was bent out backwards yeah. on the back of the picture huh. it was yeah it was like like somebody had yanked it yeah and thrown it. and thrown it and it was in the middle of the floor so yeah, things get thrown, and um, when we have larger crowds, they act up like that. They don't like it as much as right. when we have to do. Mm -hmm. It they yeah, intimate uh, gatherings don't cause as much activity. That they, right. they don't like the larger ones where people are in and out, up and down, right. everywhere. So yeah, well, well, it definitely sounds like you have a paranormal hotspot on your hands, Renee. So <laughs> <laughs> um, not too now, sure. <laughs> Now that you said there's been you know movies and, and and shows and stuff filmed there. Now did like any of the the film crew or anything tell you that they experienced stuff while they were there? Well, Gavin Kelly, you know, does Truth or Legends in your hometown. Yeah, he he stamped this place as truth. Okay. So, but yeah, they did our. Um, what did he do that day, or was he just recording with the girls downstairs? Because he 
It was the, was that that was the evidence day, I think. That was the evidence day. Mm -hmm. He actually used our Christmas investigation with uh, Leslie Hyde, and that was shown as one of the episodes. And then when he came here, I'm not too sure. They yeah, did part investigation or yeah, they did their own uh, investigation, and then he had the day that I was on the show. It was the evidence day where everybody was seated around the dining room table. Mm -hmm. And he played back the evidence, remember? Yeah, I mean, he used a lot of evidence. And it was the voice. It was the voice uh, saying, get the fuck out. You know, no. like that. Holy yeah, shit. It was <laughs> I know, it was horrible. It was horrible. That's and, crazy. Uh, yeah, and then, um, you know, I don't know if it's aired. I don't know, but he did say it was truth. And I have him quoted several times saying that place is haunted, you know. Yeah, him and Paul are coming back. They're, they're coming back. They're coming back yeah. next year. So, okay okay yeah, yeah and so now you've said you've decided to kind of open it up to more like paranormal teams to come in so why why did you kind of decide to do that well we're trying to get fundraising because the house something about houses in the south they just rot and they deteriorate from water damage i've never yeah. seen anything like it and it's fast it's not over time right i mean i'm from oregon and we don't see that there because we mm -hmm. don't have humidity and tons of rain like y'all do here right so mm -hmm. yes, this house is definitely in need of desperate repairs. Right now, it needs a roof. It's been quoted at what fifty five thousand dollars for a roof, and if we can't, and even before that, gutters. gutters I mean, gutters said. for sure, because the water's coming down next right. to the foundation. It's mm -hmm. soaking down the porches, and the porches mm -hmm. pillars are dropping into the porch. And so my porch is like this now. Oh wow! Yeah, and one of the beams is turned, and then my back porch. The whole support beam where the corner of the house is, is just crumbling, rotting away. Yes, oh, and it's, it's, it's water damage. And yeah, most of the porches have some damage, and I'll lose part of my structure, like, soon if I don't get these fixed. But right. I'm not doing a restored house for me. We're wanting, you know, to turn it into a community place. Right. Yeah. We've even thought of, because this is I one. I kind of want to do, like, you know, yeah, some gardens and greenhouses and little okay. cottages and just, you know, a place for the community, weddings, events, a venue. uh, venues, okay. or Victorian, because this architecture is classic Victorian. Yeah, you don't find this in a lot of historic homes, right. even. And, right. and the fact that it's original, you know, it hasn't been reproduced. And it's the first house built in Oxford. It wouldn't have an <laughs> Oxford without it. And there's actually right. a book, like, a hard book with all the history and people. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's. We just want to re preserve and restore. Right. This center, center, just yeah, anything for people to use for it know. to be a part, very much a part of the community. Community gardens, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, well, opening it up, opening it up to investigative teams, that, that is definitely a good way to, to to raise some funds. As long as you can get the word out there and, and people start slowly getting their evidence posted and stuff, it. Just from what you've told me, it, it sounds like mm -hmm. it, it would be a paranormal hotspot and, and make the, the house a lot of money for you guys to kind of get this thing fixed up. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get it to the point how you want it, are you still going to allow investigations that people, if people still want to do that? Or are you just going to kind of... Absolutely. Kinda... Around if they want to. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, a... you know, so everybody can enjoy it. So. All right. So, um if somebody wanted to come investigate, say, like, what, what have you got a kind of general idea of how much you're wanting to charge? Like, how long you're going to allow them to be there? We have a basic price. We're just saying it's mainly donations because the city of Oxford is being difficult right now. Yes. I used to do Airbnb and <laughs> they're yeah. all about money. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And they have a new Marriott coming in. Okay. She, she received, she received a cease and desist letter from the city of Oxford telling her that she could not operate an Airbnb because she lives in a residential area. And I'm thinking, duh, that's what Airbnbs are. They're, you know, homes that people rent rooms in. So she got a cease and desist. Eleven of us did. I was yeah, the she wasn't the only one. So they're they're stopping the Airbnb here in Oxford. But she will work on a donation based uh mm -hmm. It's yeah. just like they did a 180. I was talking with Charlotte, the city council lady. And I had gone to a previous meeting. And they were all excited about my plans, you right. know? And, and then the next meeting, they had their millionaires there. 
Uh, and I know who's getting paid what, but they mm -hmm. totally did a 180 on their attitude towards us. And not community. not to mention she had race fans. Yeah, we all had course. race fans booked two days before the races, and they weren't going to let us host them. Right. So what I ended up doing is say, okay, I'll cancel my Airbnb, and they all did donations, and they all got to stay here. <laughs> well, it, it, sound, it sounds like the city's just being greedy because it sounds like if, if they're not going to make money, they don't want to allow you to do something like that. Exactly. So. Because the previous That's... meeting brought up taxes, and I said, well, Airbnb takes out taxes. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so we get some of that. And yeah, so they knew about it. But the next meeting, they tried to pretend they didn't know anything about Airbnbs in the area operating. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. say a team comes in and says, I'll give you X amount of dollars. Like how, how, how long would they be able to stay there for? We have rates for two to four hours. We have overnight investigations because I do accommodations, So they're allowed to stay in the rooms. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. kind of in there too. Um, we did 9, 9 PM to 6 AM if they want to investigate all night. Okay. Um, I haven't decided because the house isn't quite as well known as, you know, like the Lowry house or the one in Birmingham. They do. Yeah. Right. So I'm willing to work with people right now if they want to, like, we just need some good donations to get started on the work. So. Right. Um, yeah. But hopefully, you know, th this podcast will hopefully help get you guys some down, uh, some teams down there. And uh, I know we had talked about my team possibly coming down there sometime next year because uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm constantly scouring Facebook and the Internet looking for new places for our team to go. And and just from what I read and what you've told me that. Too, and it's got the original 1880s carriage barn that's haunted out there, too, and the land. So, I mean, there's a lot to investigate here. Right. And, and and that's what we like. We like a, a, a lot to do. And, and it makes it good to actually be able to stay there instead yeah. of having to spend Worry extra – instead of having to spend extra money for a hotel or spend four or five hours trying to drive back after you've been up all night. So Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that'll yeah. – uh, With uh, Leslie, because I used to be a Southern Ghost Strong, help with her events mm -hmm. until I got sick. But – Yes, we've had to drive five or six hours before, and we've yeah. done it like one or two in the morning. Like, mm -hmm. oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so so that'll help. That, in my opinion, will help attract some people too. Like, you know, the, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to sleep now. I don't got to worry about driving 45 minutes across town to a hotel or drive three hours back home. I can just sleep for a few hours and get up and go. So, sure, that's, yeah, uh, that's a definitely a a positive on that part. So I know you yeah. said you have some tenants. Are, are they eventually going to be able to, are they eventually going to have to move out once you kind of get everything? How if I it? do business otherwise, yeah. I have two permanent tenants right now. I've opened up four of the rooms for people that want to come. Right. But that's been my main income source, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have investigations in the house, do they do they stay on the property or do they kind of go to a friend's house for a few hours? How does that work? It's the weekend, so they do leave for the weekend. I do have the one permanent that he's kind of... <laughs> Refuses, but he stays in his room. So. Okay. I got you. I got you. And so, uh, so is there anything else you kind of want to talk about? Um, just you want to talk about what happened to me in the purple room? But they, I was here before I moved in. I was doing some decorating for her for Christmas, and she was working in Tennessee at a, a what the Hyundai plant or whatever. But anyway, GMC, yeah, yeah, GMC. But anyway, she wasn't going to be here, and she had this big Christmas thing coming up. So I stayed and and did the decorating, and it was a great time. But um, the guy across the hall from me was in the purple room. The purple room is the most haunted room in this house, and I was helping him set up a Roku TV. He just bought a Roku, and we were in there and. We, uh, I heard something kind of like jangling, like chingling together. And we stopped and I said, do you hear that? And I walked around and it was coming from the closet in the purple room. And when I opened the door, the um, fireplace poker set was in the closet and it was clanging together. Huh. And the closet is, is a very narrow closet there was no breeze whatsoever. And I thought there may be a rat or a mouse down there. So I just kind of right. looked and the thing kept jiggling together. And he said, oh, hell, he said, that's supposed to be right there. And he pointed to the the hearth, you know, and mm -hmm. she has it now. 
by on the hearth, but she has saran wrap around it because yes, the previous tenant that just moved out, she did that because she was having problems. Yeah, she said other huh. people have her shingling together, but that later on that night, um, I went to bed and he was in bed. And there was a knock on my door and I, I said, who is it? You know, he said, it's Chris. And I opened the door and he said, can I come in here? And I said, what's wrong? He said, I'm really scared. And I said, what's going on? And I let him in and he was a young guy in his twenties. And um, he said, I thought that you had left something in the room. He said, I heard footsteps and I thought you had come back in for something. He said, and then I felt the covers being pulled off of me oh, on no. the he said, and he said, all I could think about was, you know, my phone flashlight. He said, there's nobody in there. He said, but I was afraid to get out of bed. I was afraid to put my feet on the floor. Mm. He said, but he said, can I stay in here? And I said, sure. And he slept at the foot of my bed that night. So he heard footsteps. He felt covers being dragged off of him. Yeah, they did not mm. like him. He was scared most of the time he lived here. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that was the same, just that was the same night that after we heard the Chingling in the closet. So I don't wow. know. Well, we, the better if he stayed in the purple room. We have little Sam in there. He's mm. about a five or six year old little boy. And there's a little rocking horse in there. It actually did it the other day. And I was going to get my phone. It started rocking me by itself. Oh, nice. I catch it. But I was like, oh, where's my phone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he yeah. loves to play pranks on people. Now, when you do an investigation, he'll go from room to room and you'll chase him. He likes uh -huh. to play hide and seek. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, he's he's a kick. <laughs> <laughs> so the the purple room. Why why do you say that's the most haunted room in the house? It, the it, it's the room with the most activity. Yes. Okay. It, well, every time there's an investigation here, that room is on fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, and we've had um, people come in who say that it's the very masculine feeling room mm -hmm. until they open the closet door and it's very feminine feeling in there especially huh. in the corner where the little thing was chingling. So huh. that's weird. And another weird thing I want to say is in my research, there were a lot of Marys in this family. Yeah, more than one. Yes. And a granddaughter was named Mary. And in Charles Cooper's last will and testament, every grandchild he had when he uh, passed, he left, I think it was $150 and a horse. Mm -hmm. To every grandchild he had, except his grandchild named Mary, he left her five dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, so there's you know I keep saying there's something about Mary, and <laughs> right. you know there <laughs> no, there definitely is something weird about that little Mary girl. Yeah, and, that's that's crazy. Now you say there's other what do you say a barn on the property too? Yeah, it's the original 1880s carriage barn. So so what what kind of stuff happens out there? Well, nobody's really done too much investigation, but they, you just feel like somebody's staring at you, and we may we think there might have been some lynchings out there. Oh. Yeah. The original yeah. raptors are there, the original dust and dirt. I mean, oh. when you're out there walking around... Nothing, it makes you sick, literally. I, like, I feel sick in my face hurts when I walk around in that dust out there. And... Oh. That's where she keeps her decorations, yeah. like the Christmas deck. <laughs> so the whole time I'm lugging, and I didn't even know, like I didn't know, I didn't know anything about the history of the barn. And the whole time that I'm getting these big tubs of, you know, Christmas lights and things out, like I'm feeling so weird mm -hmm. in in that building. And it's daylight, and it's a pretty day, and there's sun shining, and it's a crisp, you know, day. And I just feel horrible in that barn. Yeah. After one investigation, I went outside to wish. Leslie goodbye and I heard this male voice start talking like from that area I was scared I was like oh my god everybody's gone and I'm out here in the dark but me I like to investigate <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go look around I'm like is anybody here you know it kept talking I'm like oh my gosh somebody's here. <laughs> so yeah. I looked up some more I'm like no heck with this I'm going to the house right <laughs> And actually, weren't you told that there's a portal out there by that barn? We're not sure if there's one out there or one in the attic. Or yeah. If, or I don't know. We've been told there's portals. And the cemetery yeah. where they're buried it's just up the road. is right up the yeah. road. So yeah. I feel like they... Well, that's another thing we're going to do. We're going to put together a ghost history walk. We're going to oh, start. Right. And we're going to go to the cemetery and then the Cooper businesses downtown and then the Peerless Saloon. Tell them about that one. 
Oh, the Peerless Saloon is the first saloon in Alabama, and it's haunted, and it's, haunted. it's right down the street. Um, the owner actually gave us a tour the other day. Um, it even had like a madam and, you know, ladies of the evening. Uh. And the madam actually died there. Mm -hmm. And she has seen her. Um, the There's a lot of activity at that saloon. So anyone who does want to investigate here, mm -hmm. do it, what, three miles up the road mm -hmm. or, or so, there's another another location. Um, it's, a, it's a saloon. It used to be a brothel. And it's right. still is in operation today as a pub, and okay. a, and they have great food, great yes. music. Yeah, so uh -huh. we thought we'd all just end up there after. Yeah, so. right. It's so you, you could uh you you could hit up two places in one night if you really wanted to. Right. It's called yeah. Peerless P E E R L E S S Peerless Saloon. Okay. Okay. And the mm -hmm. Devil All the Time was also filmed there. Yes, and had a scene spots there. in Aniston as well as here. So now, now when that movie was filmed there, did they actually film inside the house or just like some outside shots? Um, no, they first uh, approached me two months before, and they met my father. He fell in love with my father. He was older. <laughs> I was working that night, and he said, "Well, he took pictures. This isn't going to work for this project." He said, "I have one perfect for you in two months from now." So he came back. And my dad met him again since he really enjoyed him. And I lost my father, so I got a dud on him. <laughs> but anyway, I was working again. <laughs> but he said, this is perfect for the devil all the time. With Robert Pattinson and what's the oh, Spider-Man guy? Tom Holland. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So he said, well, we're going to use your barn in a scene. And I thought, okay, that's all you're going to use. Okay. And they made my my back three acres hadn't been mowed. They wanted it like a field all grown mm -hmm. over. And they said, we'll mow it for you later. <laughs> and yeah, so I thought, okay, that's all they're going to use. And I actually watched the movie. Yeah, very messed up, dark movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw the barn and she committed suicide. She hung herself in the barn. And I said, oh. yep, barn. <laughs> <laughs> and so I watched the movie till the end. And uh, Tom Holland was older and it was his little boy. The little boy ran around my garage and Tom Holland was working on an antique car and it showed the whole side of my house and everything. I was like, no! Oh! <laughs> yeah. So they used that too. <laughs> well, that, well, that's awesome. And, uh, and see, so you can kind of, kind of use that as promotion as well to kind of, you know, kind of get people kind of drawn in. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I, it sounds like you have a lot of a positive, a lot of positive things that like are work in your favor with this thing. Um, <laughs> as long as, you know, you can get the word out there and, uh, <clears throat> and I, as I'll say, promote the hell out of it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we need help with it. I'm, I'm working so. on a fund me page right now. Yeah. And she's working on the I'll get my Facebook page up so people okay. can go to that. Uh, and, the, and the reason we're a little slow on that is because before that, we were doing a website and mm -hmm. before she got the cease and desist. Yeah. So we, well, you know, yeah. So we're kind yeah. of playing. Up, yeah. Well, I, I know of at least two or three, maybe even four teams right off the top of my head that I know would love to come down there. Um, That's awesome. Well, great. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, whenever uh, we get done with this interview, I, I'm going to reach out to a couple of them. And one of them, they may come as soon as possible because they do a lot yeah, of traveling. So. I'll show you next year when uh -huh. people want to come. So. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Like I said, it sounds like you have a really active house, and, and that, that excites me, and that, that should excite any paranormal investigators in general. Um, Wait, I have one clip, one clip I want to send you. We did a Jeepers, and, a Jeepers Creepers and local investigators that came here, mm -hmm. and they were get, wrapping up their stuff, their equipment, and I was sitting out there because Mary loves to sit out in the hallway at the top of the stairs. She can look over the landing. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to ask her out one more question. And I said, Mary, are you are you guys glad that we came here and did this investigation? There was three women. They are so more quieter and it's so much nicer. They like women. Mm -hmm. Mary's there most of the time. It was very positive. The energy felt great mm -hmm. and she was more active and talking. And so I said, I said, Mary, are you glad that we came? And, you know, did you have a good experience? And, and you asked them, you said, are you, do you think you'll come back? And yeah. and then there was a glitch in the video because they were still recording. And there was a whisper that says, "I hope so." Oh and wow! Was, and and then there was another glitch. Very yes, nice. 
the uh -huh. most, the best evidence I have. Look, I have chills. Wait, yeah. I, was big, I mean, it gave me chills when I heard it because everybody was just doing their yeah, thing. Yeah, we weren't expecting Nobody anything. heard it. We but didn't hear it until we played the video back. When you play it back, it's clear as day. It is day. clear as day. It's just, oh, so. Yeah. That's that's awesome. I I love a, a good clear EVP. So yeah, flew me away. <laughs> All right, so everybody, I want to thank Renee and Kelly. Renee, the owner of a very haunted house hey, in in Oxford, Alabama, the Oxana Victorian. So guys, once they get their Facebook and stuff up and going, hit these ladies up and get down there investigating this place. It sounds like you're going to be blown out of the water by it. So. Oh, thank you. Right, ladies, I thank you so much. And thank I will you. talk to everybody next time. All right. Thank right, you. Thanks, Bye bye. Bye bye.